And then Ronnie. <laughs> also known as. John from MasterChef. Also known as Mum. <laughs> um, and uh, welcome to our channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you can do the usual social media admin of clicking the bell, subscribing, liking, and commenting, and as usual, any questions that you've got, just put them in the comments or direct message us, and we'll get back to you as soon as it's humanly possible. Today, we are going to make our classic family bolognese with every hidden vegetable under the sun so it's a kind of rainbow dish i don't know about your kids or even your baby kids and adults but ours predominantly are not that keen on mushrooms and this hides mushrooms in it carrots which of course they love but courgettes and peppers and kind of anything that's left over in the fridge you can chuck it in there so the first thing we're going to do is ron is going to cut the red onions. So get the knife. I've got your tiny knife, so it's just it's small. better. It's too small. Fine. <laughs> and while he's doing that, I'm going to get our magic mix because it really makes a difference to hide this stuff. It's just, you know, from our point of view, hiding it sometimes spares the party. So it does. Break up. I've given these a little wash already. Break up. The mushrooms and we're doing about 400 grams of mushrooms about that. I reckon one little, one, tray. Little tub, one little tray of mushrooms because if you're making the effort to magic mix stuff then you might as well make a big a, yeah make a big batch so we big are batch. the king and queen of the batch because what we'll actually do is make loads of this which will be for tomorrow next week in the fridge and also we will freeze it in the Compartments, so the containers rather. So, Great, when you can't be bothered to cook. Yeah, exactly. And we all have those easy things. Oh. Right, here are so. So, you want to gently you put these on? Yeah. So, I'm going to get them onion frying. Just put all of these here ready for Ron. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to make it even easier. And put it in a bowl. Okay, lovely. Like that. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, you're frying off the onions. Frying off the onions. I'm going to put the um, pancetta or bacon bits, whichever ones you get. So, to the throw these in there. Lardons. You can go the lardons. Put a little base of flavour. And obviously, if you don't use pork, that's fine, you don't have to use them. Um, but I just think they give this bolognese an extra bit of delicious, kind of salty mm. flavour. So, look, we've just got some red peppers that are kind of left over in the fridge and they look slightly sad and they're a bit too sad for the kids to kind of eat raw or put in packed lunches without negative feedback. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we've got courgettes, which have been grown. How did you grow these, Ron? Uh, oh, I, I gave it away in the question. Right, Who, grew exactly. these? Who grew these? Who grew these? I grew these. Well done. And um, <laughs> they're absolutely delicious. So cool. And also, once they start going, you get loads of them. So yeah. if you like them, definitely put a couple in the ground. And I would say they're kind of one of the easiest things that we've grown. Like we've only been growing three years. Three years. We are still newbie gardeners. We do not really know what we're doing, and that is okay. So you've got two small courgettes, like a hot two halves of a pepper. I'd say two carrots. Do you reckon it's probably two enough? Two carrots is plenty. Yeah. Um, if you can buy organic. Buy organic into the order, but I get it, it is a bit expensive. But if you can with your carrots, you always buy organic because apparently they're like the worst defenders for the pesticides. Um, you know, a root veg, that makes sense. So, yeah, I'm not even sure I'm going to use that courgette. I might use half of that actually. So, the amount of courgette that we've used there, two small ones and half of a standard, is probably one big one, and that's plenty. Also, you can throw in whatever you like. Yeah, just pack it in some vegetables, get some nutrients in there. And I'm also going to throw, while you're doing the garlic, excuse me, oh, right, I'm going to throw in a whole bunch of basil. 
which I'm going to throw in as I shush up these veggies. We're actually going to flavour this with some mixed herbs and some oregano from the garden. The bees are lovely. know that the kids are going to eat a bolognese and not really know that they're having like how many different types of veggies. <laughs> you can say five. Yeah, I was going to say five, but I felt like I added, a, added one. So yeah, while I put those there, so you've got your onions on, got your pancetta or lardons on, um, they're just frying. I'm just going to give them a little box so good. You want to get a nice bit of colour on the... Uh on the on the bacon at first because yeah. that'll just have a nice deep flavour throughout the dish then. Yeah, lovely. So I'm just doing the garlic. We've got our beef lovely. prepped and like I said because we're batch cooking we're actually doing about a kilo of beef mince. So you can half this recipe. Obviously we'll we'll put the recipe on um, with the amounts that we're using for a big batch cook which basically gives us about three meals for six people, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, garlic is prepped. We don't need these veggies. And then we've got our trusted beef stock pot, which, I mean, these are literally Aldi's by this. Um, They're good. They are really good. I'm going to use two because of the batch cook. We'll need two of those. We won't put them in just yet. We use these in pretty much everything we do. It's a great way to get some so flavour in. So you're done with these soap? Which one's the most? Yeah, yeah, I reckon that, yeah. And it is so easy. We are today going to use fresh tomatoes just because they were on offer um, for the slight long term. So you cut them up and get them ready. Of course you can use two tins of tomatoes. That's totally fine, but as we've got on our recipes where we do it like the layered um, Masaka that we did the other day, actually having fresh tomatoes really is the flavour profile, doesn't it? It's really lovely. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go and cut some oregano from the garden. <laughs> so, so, here's got there, so. lovely homegrown oregano. Now I've started saying it like that, I can't say it the other way. <laughs> oregano. <laughs> And as you can see, it's starting to flower. The bees absolutely love it. I'm just going to pull it off, and it will go in when the tomatoes go in. Not what I'm going to do is quickly take all of these veggies and fry them off in the bacon and the onions. Lovely. And the smell is already delicious. So yeah, just with this, you just pull it off from the top all the way down the stem to the root. Like that. And actually this is a really easy one to propagate. You literally cut it above like the second to last node, put it in water in a jam jar, change the water every two to three days, and then it will grow cute little dendroity roots. And then put, stick it in some soil and put it in a pot outside and four times out of ten it'll work, other times it won't. It's a mad thing with gardening, you just what we've Never learned. Quite know, do you? Never quite know. I mean, I'm sure Monty Dunn does, but we don't ever quite know. So look, there's a nice, generous amount of that fresh herbs. And, oh my gosh, the smell is insane. If you can grow anything, because herbs are so expensive, I would say just grow herbs. You don't have to have a garden, but you can just do it on the window, um, the windowsill. So yeah, there we go. That's the herbs prepared. I'm going to bring them on the shrooms, the humble mushroom, which, you know, the reason we stick these in for the kids and hide them is because they are packed full of vitamin D. And I heard the other day that if you leave your mushrooms out in the sun, then it, I'm not sure it quite doubles the amount of vitamin D in it, but it certainly increases it by at least, I think, about 30%. So, little tip for you. Here are the mushrooms. And, yeah, I mean, it looks so beautiful. All those, like I said, the rainbow colours 
just looks absolutely gorgeous. And Ron's just going to sweat those off just to try and get as much of the moisture out of them. Whilst they're going, yeah. what we'll do is we'll put the feet in another pan because they'll take about 10 minutes to sweat off that and we can fry off the beef in another pan which will take about 10 minutes. So it's another another classic of use every pan in the house. Use every but pan. It's, it's just worth it. I mean, the, the washing up piles up regardless, doesn't it? But yeah, it's a really good shout just fry it off separately and then once those veggies are all sweated off and cooked, then you can add them in. Obviously a bit more volume oil in a separate pan. Oh, look at the lovely light coming through. Um, yeah, so we'll just cook those and then we will get to the next bit. Right, so whilst the meat's frying over there um, and all the veggies are basically cooked, I'm going to add the garlic into the meat yeah. and um, slowly cook that off because as we know, we don't like burnt garlic. So we'll just soften it slightly in that. I am today designated KP. You don't know what one is? Then we'll go and work in the kitchen. Kitchen water. <laughs> <laughs> We're constant KPs in this constant house. Constant KP. Always looking for an out from that role. <laughs> always delighted when someone else does it. Never ending. <laughs> right, so then when we've got the um, we've got the veggie mix cooking. And to the veggie mix, I'm going to add these two stock pots and give them a stir in. Right, so now I've added the stock pots. Give them a quick stir. And the garlic's nice and soft yeah. in the meat. So now I'm going to combine the two. Right, so in goes all of that meat into the veggies. Now we're down to the old one pan. And into there we are going to put a mixture of tomatoes, oregano and some mixed herbs. Also you're going to add a bit of salt and a bit of pepper. <laughs> so me, see you. See how seamlessly we move from one end of the kitchen to the other, not knocking into each other. Without any relational animosity. <laughs> oh, that is smelling and looking to be delicious. So, so to this now, this is where this is where you can either add um, a really nice big glass of red wine and cook that down to add to the sauce or you can put in about 200 ml of water just so that you've got some liquid for everything to combine. So this time we're going to add water, water not wine, water not wine, and then reduce the heat. And when you add loads of water to it you have to put a nice dollop of salt in there as well otherwise it will weaken the flavour. on low for 20 minutes? Yeah, I'd say another 20 minutes. With a lid on. And That's then right. uh, we'll let you know what it's like in a minute. We've now cooked off the hidden delicious spag bowl for a further 20 to 30 minutes and it is just so delicious and dense and you can't see any of those veggies. So for the fussiest eater, either child or adult, it honestly, yeah, is, is very hidden and it is delicious. Mm, it was so good. And for us, we serve that with these low carb noodles. They are just amazing. They're cognac noodles. I think we mentioned before, you can get the bare naked noodles. They're the kind of gold standard. They're the most delicious. They are a bit more expensive. You can also get these from you know, Bargains no less. Um, and occasionally they have their own kind of brand versions in like Aldi and Little Legs.
etc etc so just keep an eye out for them but yes yeah, so that's our hidden spag bowl it is absolutely delicious so yummy let us know what you think ding that bell subscribe comment all the usual stuff and we will be back soon with a new video thank you